Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Clash Royale video. And as you can see folks, today we have done it. We have hit Challenger 3. So folks, as you all would know, I have been pretty dormant on ladder for a long while now. But that has all come to an end as of last season. So after making my uh, last tech guide, I got to thinking and I decided, you know what, it's about time I push. And uh, believe it or not, the last guide that I covered actually did have a legit 100% win rate on Stats Royale. Um, I'm pretty sure you can check it out right now and it should still say that, but if not, I can show you all a screenshot as well. So yeah, um, anyways, I played the deck on ladder and it worked very well, but I noticed my card levels weren't that great for some of the cards, particularly like the Fireball and the Tombstone, I just couldn't bring myself to invest in leveling in those cards because they weren't cards that I always want to use for ladder. However, I noticed that some other cards like you're seeing on the screen right now uh, were leveled up quite a bit more with the exception being the Witch there and I figured you know what, let's go with it. Let's use a variant of my deck and it would be built using some of the substitutions I left for you guys in my last video. Now I do apologize for not really talking about it but from now on I'll probably just uh, do some edits just to show you guys what cards um, are gonna be substitutions for cards that you may not have or may not want to level. So yeah, um, anyways I forgot to mention this in the last video but um, as you would have seen in the description, I did in fact get this deck approved by a pro player known as Sauna Dude, and he really loved the deck overall. I mean, no deck is perfect, but he did agree that this uh, last deck that I did was pretty darn strong and one of the better decks he saw uh, out there for Giant beatdown with witch and stuff so we talked a lot there and after discussing some stuff we agreed uh that the inferno dragon and the poison spell would do much better he was against the valkyrie being in the deck really he said he'd prefer something like maybe minions or maybe something else like bats or the mega minion now regardless of what variant you guys choose to use the core aspect of this deck still remains pretty solid and I would really recommend you guys try it out sometime for yourselves and see just how good it is and as you can see on the screen right now I'm getting away just barely uh, from this guy I'm fighting right now and we three crowned him we were in a base rush there and I did manage to get to his uh, king tower before he connected to mine so yeah as you can see this deck is pretty powerful I went over most of the details for using the cards in my last guide so please check it out if you can I will leave a link to the video and the stats royal guide in the description and the pinned comment and stuff so do check it out but for this video I won't be going into too much detail about all the cards so we'll be running through the cards that were used in the previous deck really quickly and then we'll focus more on the newer cards to this deck so that you guys can get a better understanding of how they can be used but again make sure you guys check out the previous video and the written guide these tips that I give you guys are pretty invaluable trust me folks I go into real great detail with these things and they're really worth your time so do check it out when you have the chance and let me know what you guys think of it with a comment down below I really enjoy getting feedback on the videos and guys that I make they really have my heart and soul poured out into it but anyways enough blabbing let's get on with it so we have the giant and the miner as our win conditions the giant can be used to sponge damage at times and kite the miner can be used for tactical purposes such as um, assassinating glass cannons on the other side it can also be used for misdirection sometimes you can pull peckers and stuff into the opposite lane if used correctly I tried to do it at some point in time in this video but it kind of failed a little bit I'll explain why later and also you can use them as a cycle card so that you can get back to other cards that you need uh, more readily and also you can use them of course as a source of chip damage throughout the match whenever you have the elixir advantage and you know you don't need to uh, reserve him for any specific reason now aside from that of course you can also use him against the elixir collector and the princess as well should the opportunity present itself and you don't have your poison in hand now anyways besides these two cards here we're going to be talking about the witch and the valkyrie these are two also very pivotal cards in this deck now let me say this up front folks my witch is level freaking five and i pushed up to 4600 trophies with her she did so so well on ladder honestly if you have a level five witch i'm pretty sure you can make this deck work guys and speaking of which the level five witch after her buff she could actually withstand a max 
fireball and not die the only way she will die um, in that scenario there is if they pair up that max fireball with an appropriately level zap so do you know what that means folks that means the witch is really really suited for spell bait folks and I'm pretty sure most of you out there are probably used to bait in general so if you like bait a little bit then I am pretty darn certain that this deck will prove to be not only very fun to use but also very rewarding as well so uh, anyways let's continue with the guide so like I was saying the witch has spell bait uh, capabilities she's also very good for distracting and defense like we established before in my previous video those skeletons they just come out so fast they are really really just full of value aside from the skeletons themselves being a possible source of zap bait people will obviously try to zap down the witch they'll sometimes log her poison you get the idea they use spells on the witch because they figured hey it's a witch it's a sporting unit why not right but that's where they make the mistake folks that is where a lot of players who I fought on my winning streak actually on ladder with this deck they went so wrong with it that they could not come back at times because I kept them on a rotation where I just kept using the goblin gang and stuff every single time that they wasted their spells and they always have to be dealing with something like a split push as well now as far as the Valkyrie goes, she is pretty straightforward to use and she is a seriously, seriously powerful force to be reckoned with folks. She can be capable of helping you defend against two princes at once, the prince and the dark prince. Man, she can handle all of that with ease. Now, in this meta right now where you'll see a lot more witches than usual, she's actually very handy to have around and since my witch was underleveled facing against level 6, Seven and even level 8 which is on ladder and other supporting units such as musketeers and wizards and all of that jazz you can definitely count on a valkyrie being able to help you out against some of the most annoying supporting units also she can help you deal with the elite barbarians I know a lot of you out there will be complaining about elite barbarians on ladder for days I hated elite barbarians myself for eons so that's why I requested so many valkyries uh, to get mine up to level 10 at a really really early stage in the game I just really hated ebobs with a passion back then no offense to any of you ebob users out there but I really just wanted to make my opponents who used ebobs that were over leveled just cry a bit now Anyways folks, like I was saying, the Valkyrie has a lot of defensive capabilities and also when you are in need of a different counter to certain units like the Prince, Mini Peckers and all of that stuff, you can count on the Valkyrie to be that solid counter to those troops. Now she does not hard counter stuff like the Hog Rider but you will often see me using her sometimes uh, whenever I have the chance and the reason for that is because I like to mix it up a bit so that my opponents can get the drop on me by anticipating my goblin gang and throwing predictive spells so anyways if you guys haven't tried it out already make sure you check out the spartan elite energy drink i'll have a link to their website in my description and pinned comment down below and using my code you can get a discount on your next purchase so make sure you plug in that code when you purchase your next drink so anyways our last card from the previous video is going to be the zap spell now this is a pretty straightforward card to use however if you do need some extra tips on it please consult the guides that i have written in the past uh they can really help you out a lot anyways basically you're just going to be using the zap mainly to help reset inferno dragons inferno towers getting some value uh zap spells on skeleton armies if you encounter any or maybe making the tower reset aggro or maybe even a troop reset their aggro onto something else like the minor uh mainly anyways now that we have covered all of the old cards let's focus on our three new cards so these are going to be the goblin gang the inferno dragon and the poison spell now I do know that the Inferno Dragon was just hit with a 0.5 uh, range reduction and that really sucks but the card still holds a lot of value guys. Even if it doesn't uh, have the same reach as it used to, it can still do the same amount of damage and that's what really matters. The ability to just burn down anything that is in its pathway now. guys. Please be very careful when you're using the Inferno Dragon, you're going to want to be adapting to a more bait uh, style of playing because when you're playing this deck, you're going to be relying on drawing out your opponent's spells by using cards such as the Witch and the Goblin Gang which would then allow you to utilize your Inferno Dragon to incinerate 
all that stand in its path so basically what you want to do like i said is just have those cards ready to bait out their spells and even if they don't fall for the bait and they do happen to zap that inferno dragon chances are you can punish them for it later uh, by rushing with the miner and gang now as you can see in the match going on right now i'm actually facing a super really unbelievable hard counter this guy has double peckers he has a mega minion he has triple spells and most importantly he has a hog rider as well which really puts a lot of pressure on me folks uh the hog rider in general is something i fought a lot and the hog is something that does give this deck some competition but as you would have seen there just now he was so focused on getting rid of my witch that he neglected to just conserve his spells properly he used the log knowing fully well that i had a goblin gang and then he was left with a zap and what does that mean folks i can just rush with the miner and goblin gang and that from the moment i realized that was working for me i got a decent amount of damage done on his tower there i began to roll with it that was my game plan there just bait out his spells by distracting him in one lane and then pushing the other the instant i feel he's low on elixir and i see that log was burnt so basically that's my game plan that's my mantra like i said you gotta be really aware of what spells they have in cycle and knowing what spells they have in cycle you'll be able to better handle the situations at hand now that giant there was a misplay forgive me for that but i did get some poison value like i said you gotta use the poison to smother as many things as possible now he's gonna be rushing me with a hog i'm gonna try to bait out his zap spell there uh actually no i did not bait out the zap spell i was actually Actually in panic mood I wanted to make sure that I got rid of uh, the hog rider because again this deck does not uh, fully counter the hog very well but if you can bait out the spells you can then continue using your inferno dragon on offense like I'm doing here I know that he'd have to respond with the pekka and look at this what you're witnessing here folks is one of the most beautiful things that you can see in any given match using this deck the inferno dragon has locked onto the big pekka there burning it down to the ground there and that same inferno dragon acquired a lot of value it killed the four elixir hog rider it baited out a zap spell and then it killed a seven elixir pekka keep all of that in mind folks when you have one card just tearing through waves and waves of enemy troops it will allow you to net so many positive elixir traits and positive elixir traits are always a good thing they are never a bad thing because having the elixir advantage means that you can play around a little bit more freely and assert yourself a bit more using your giant and your witch pushes which is really the bread and butter of this deck so anyways uh, like I was saying now we have covered the Inferno Dragon how you're going to be using it a little bit there but just some tips to keep in mind is that you want to keep the Inferno Dragon hanging back a little bit sometimes don't always rush to put it at the bridge because then you'll fall victim to an enemy's Electro Wizard or sometimes they'll spam it with minions which can be pretty annoying or bats anything basically that can distract your Inferno Dragon you'll want to proceed with caution otherwise you're going to live to regret it so anyways as you would have noticed almost all of these matches have hog matchups and i did this on purpose because mostly they were my most epic fights and also because they are tougher matchups in general so as you guys can see here we're fighting a dirty royal giant hog users so we gotta be very careful with this we're gonna have to wash our hands after uh playing this match and probably throw away my phone like ash would have suggested when he did his royal giant um deck guide now royal giant eh it's an okay card i can understand why people use it i can understand why people get mad at it but personally it's just a little bit infuriating for me because i don't have any buildings to distract it but whatever we do have the inferno dragon and that helps a ton by itself so as you would see here my opponent burnt a log really early for nothing now i'm pretty surprised he did and take a look at this if not for those arrows we would have gotten so much damage off on that other tower there now we do get our giant to connect and we do get some damage on the other side sometimes Splitting your damage isn't the worst thing, it can help you out against tougher matchups for the long run because if you do manage to take a tower and they do manage to take a tower as well, you will have the advantage going into the late game by having damage already dealt onto their other towers so it makes life a bit easier for you. Now he has the royal giant here and he's ready to punish me for using my inferno dragon so earlier on so his royal giant really has a lot of free reign against me right now and I know I can't 
uh, used the witch really well to push but I figured you know what let's go with the miner now and see how he reacts now he does make the smart move there and drop his valkyrie but he misplaces it he should have dropped the valkyrie on top of the witch because look at this the miner in the back does draw the valkyrie backwards there and allows my witch and the skeletons to get some damage off onto the right side tower there so things are looking pretty good but now here's where I mess up a bit I place the valk there to distract his valk so I can use my gang there but he has arrows in hand like I said folks you got to be careful against some of these guys here because they will be ready with some predictive spells at times and like my opponent there was quick on the draw I fell victim to it there now he has the tombstone to pull my giant and he also has the mega minion to do a lot of work for him as well now i do decide to poison there we catch a lot of value there by poisoning the valkyrie we poison the mega minion tower and the tombstone that is what i call a lot of value folks and look at that i also zapped knowing that his tower was going to lock onto my miner there and get free reign with my giant now he does have the hog rider in hand and he uses it there and unfortunately for me i could not stop it for the life of me so seeing that i have these leftover troops what do i do folks i do the only logical thing i could think of and that was to continue pushing upwards with my giant up top now i do see that he burns a log there and i was waiting for that actually and i rushed the opposite lane with my miner and gang now i do get some damage off with the spear goblins but again his deck counters mine fairly well and besides the fact that he has two building targeting units in his deck, it also uh, is really difficult for me because I have no building in general. So as you can see here folks, he's rushing my right side lane there to kill my king tower there. But we do manage to get our giant to the tower there with the help of the poison there because he overcommitted there and could not defend at all. So that wraps it up for that match there folks. And if you guys can, please take a minute to vote in my custom draft polls. I host these every now and then just so that I can get an idea of how you guys think when you're playing the game overall. So our current draft right now is going to be between the Valkyrie and the Royal Ghost. They're both pretty similar cards really and a lot of people have their own reasons for using one or the other but I want to hear it from you. Which card do you think is really the best choice in your opinion? And Make sure you let me know what's on your mind by leaving a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So I'll always be checking to see which card is favored most by my fan base, and I'll let you guys know the results in the next one. Now the results from the previous one would tell me that you guys prefer the witch and honestly I can't blame you. The same reasons that most of you outlined there is basically what's on my mind as well. So anyways, let's get back right into it. So about the Goblin Gang, it is a card that you'll want to be using on split pushes at times and on rushes with your miner when your opponent wastes their spells. And in addition to this, you guys can also use the Goblin Gang to help distract certain things such as the Sparky that I'm fighting on the screen right now and also things such as the Inferno Dragon, Inferno Tower, you name it. The Goblin Gang is a really versatile card overall as it can help you distract single target units, it can help you deal with air targeting units, it's great for a lot of things folks and you can use it to help bait out spells like I said before. So just keep that in mind when you're using the gang and also a little tip I like to practice is splitting the gang when I know my opponent has a hard counter in hand such as the log and then if it's an opening play I go push the side with less goblins and the reason for this is because people will more likely be paying attention to the lane with more goblins than the one with less so you can have one of three scenarios happening either one they'll ignore it and continue waiting for you to make a bigger investment of a troop two they can play a spell such as zap log or arrows or anything of the sort there to get rid of the goblins on the lane which has three of them or three you can have your opponent investing elixir in a troop to kill three set goblins when they do approach uh, on the enemy side there or they'll just kite them with something like an ice golem it really depends on the deck that they have but you get the general idea folks so anyways that's how you use the gang overall there you gotta be very creative with it keep an open mind and you can make a lot of magic happen so anyways Looking at this match right now, we're seeing that I'm fighting someone with some ridiculous levels. This guy, he gave me such a scare. Overall, it was just not pleasant at all. As you would have seen, I got an early start there by having him uh, play the Sparky in the opposite lane that I was pushing there. That was just pure luck. But as it moved on to the later game, I went out of my way to try to push the opposite lane every time I could see an opportunity. So seeing him waste his Sparky, that was his best hand killer. I made sure to push into the opposite lane with my giant there now i just have to defend against a sparky but again 
Sparky is level 4. That's freaking crazy, man. Close to a max Sparky. I was absolutely terrified, man. Uh, I had to play very carefully with this match because I was too afraid of losing. I did not want to throw this one away. And look at this. He waves the white flag there. He's surrendering there. There's nothing he can really do at this point in time. So it's just a matter of holding back the golem there. And that's pretty much it. So with that match being wrapped up there, we're going to be moving on to our last match for today's video. And this match, folks, is the one that allowed me to break past all of my previous records and step foot into League 3 with all of the big boys. At least where the toughest matches are starting to line up for me. Now, I'm going to be trying my best to push up to Master 1 um, within the next 2 or 3 seasons. Hopefully, I can accomplish this once I get my Witch to level uh, 6. Uh, I don't really expect that I will do it, but I'll try my best. Hopefully I can and I'll be sure to let you guys know what happens. Now take a look at this here. My opponent wastes his zap there on the Goblin Gang. Even though the Mini P.E.K.K.A. wasn't going to get through, I really don't know why he bothered doing that. But whatever, that's his choice there and it allows me to use my Inferno Dragon a bit later if I have an opportunity to do so. Now he drops a Max Giant. Folks, a Max Giant does a shit ton of damage. I'm sorry for using some of these words, but I figured, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm getting kind of tired using th the same old words. I'm gonna be a little bit more honest with my commentary because I want you guys to know exactly how much emotion I feel during some of these matches. Now, unfortunately for me right now, my opponent has the upper hand with both his levels and his um, card rotation as well because I did not uh, see myself being prepared there to deal with both the giant and witch so I continued pushing into the opposite lane there and unfortunately for me folks he does break down my tower there and I did not manage to tower trade with him at all so that's pretty unfortunate for us so we have our work cut out for us right now so I'm gonna have to deal um, or play rather a bit more carefully and try to secure his right side tower there now he's gonna zap again I believe actually no he does not he knows that I have the Inferno Dragon this time, so he saves his zap. But I send my miner there, and thankfully, one Spear Goblin does lock onto that tower there, allowing us to bring it down there and come back into the game. Now, notice I did not rush to use my poison. I prefer to save that there for his Elixir Collector. He drops a giant in the pocket, a really bold move, honestly. I would not have done that. Even if he does get some damage with his Witch, it's still a rather poor play overall because I can just use my Valkyrie, counter her. Um, well his witch sorry there and continue pushing onwards now he does have the mini P.E.K.K.A which does present a slight problem for us but the mini P.E.K.K.A is going to be quickly distracted by the goblin gang there while my giant goes to town and the inferno dragon now seems to be a bit threatening to him so he drops the mega minion there which dies really quickly there and now we have uh, damage being done on both his king tower and his crown tower there but that zap he made there was really poor honestly I would have looked at my crown tower first and not the king tower because dealing with a crown tower is so much easier than dealing with a king tower so for me I just need to drop my giant in the pocket now and that's basically GG the only thing he has to distract my giant is his elixir collector which he does drop and it drops into the poison and in reach of the goblins and skeletons there which is really unfortunate for him so as the timer runs out now we are just short of the three crown just by a few seconds so that's unfortunate for us but we still did take two of his towers there and take home the win so all in all i'm really satisfied with the results there and now we're going to be opening up our end of season draft chest so i was really looking forward to this so we get 4116 gold we take 79 zaps because i'm trying to max that right now uh our next card is going to be 18 hog riders i love uh, donating cards right now so I want to get uh, as possible mini P.E.K.K.A or uh, Mega Minion a tough choice but I do end up taking the Mega Minion because it fits into more decks Bowler or Freeze tough choice not really I'll take the Bowler any day because I use that more often and our last choice is between the Bandit and Sparky uh, no offense Sparky users but I'll be taking the Bandit sooner than the Sparky because I want to get that level 3 uh, Bandit she'll be useful uh, in Clan Wars, I'm pretty sure of it, uh, more than Sparky will, for me at least, but that's just my opinion. Anyways, like I was saying folks, I'm just really excited to have these new stats cemented onto my profile. I love seeing that shiny gold badge there uh, on my profile as well. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please do let me know what you guys thought of this video and any others with a comment down below. I really appreciate the feedback. It helps me shape the channel to be even better than it was uh, for my last upload. As you guys would know, I try 
my best to make sure that my content keeps improving every few uploads so your feedback really does matter so anyways guys that is gonna do it for today's video i hope you all enjoyed remember folks as always if you keep on digging you'll eventually strike gold but even then keep on digging deeper you'll eventually come across something even more with your wealth so once again everyone thank you so much for stopping by and i hope to see you all in the next one peace out guys